So you've begun modifying your car, and that factory tan and cheap plastic just isn't doing it for you. In this video, we're going to be swapping that out for some far more elegant carbon fiber and suede. We'll start with the center console. All of the access we need to remove this lies beneath the center cubby and cup holders. This is only held in by some clips. Simply flip up the armrest and give it a firm pull. Once removed, that will reveal a few things. The e-brake assembly, the wiring for the cigarette lighter, and of course the screws that we need to remove to get this out. One, two, three, and four. Make note of the small tab on the left front one. This holds down some wiring. Also, once you have all of the screws removed, it might be best to bag them and even label them if you want to. We're gonna be dealing with a lot of different screws from a lot of different places here. This may seem a little overly methodical right now, but it can avoid any confusion later on. Next, unplug the cigarette lighter. And then with some needle nose pliers or something comparable, Squeeze the small tabs on the back of this mounting bracket. This will release the wiring for it. Here's the tab mentioned earlier. This sits on top just like this. Now take off your shift knob and set everything aside. We can now remove the entire console. Go ahead and close the armrest to avoid breaking anything. And with E brake up, go ahead and lift it out. With the console out, you can now see the rest of the shifter and linkage. This is a really good time to install a short throw shifter or some solid aluminum base bushings. Personally, I've already done both of these as well as some Delarin Evo 8 shifter bushings on the transmission. Now it's time to clean up everything we've taken out. This is important, because this may be the first and only time you have these parts outside of the car, and we need all the surfaces clean so we can begin working on the console. Some simple green and a hose really did the trick, and the hot summer sun dried it fast. I used a nylon brush to get into some of the small crevices. Push the clip on the coin tray to hinge it off from the backside. The shift boot is attached to a mounting bracket fixed in place by four screws. Once these are out, we can then remove the shift ring that sits on top. Feel free again to bag and label your screws. The tabs holding in the shifter ring can be very brittle and most likely will break. You can still salvage the ring later. Now that's pretty much everything apart and organized. The shift boot is attached to this bracket using some staples. These come out pretty easy by hand. I cleaned up the bracket for the new boot. We're gonna use the grommet on top of the old boot for the new one. It's fixed in place with a zip tie. Just snip this and it'll come free. This helps a lot to get an OEM-like fitment and appearance from an aftermarket boot. Replacing the old top shifter ring with a carbon fiber one. I installed the grommet from the old boot into the new one, using a zip tie just like the original. We'll come back to the shift boot later once the console's finished and it's ready to go back in. To get started on the console, we need to remove the armrest. 
just the two screws on the hinge. But make sure to support the armrest while you do this, so you don't strip or damage the holes. Now it's time for the final clean and prep before we get into the thick of it. Isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber towel should be enough to remove any residue left over from your hands or any dirt that might have been left over from washing it earlier. This also tends to dry out the plastic a bit, which may help with the fabric adhering and forming a bond later. And here we have our fabric, a midnight purple suede. It appears different in varying lighting conditions, sometimes just black and oftentimes very blue. I measured a rough estimate with a tape measure and cut it to shape leaving enough excess for room for error. Lay your console and fabric out in a clean working environment for spraying. Be sure to mask off the cigarette lighter and wiring inside the console. You don't want to be spraying that. Personally, I used a 3M Super 77 spray adhesive, but there are many spray adhesives for this purpose. Truth be told, this next part of the process became a bit of a nightmare for me. I quickly learned three very important things. The first being the type of fabric that you use and the amount of elasticity it has. This will affect how well your fabric can shape and form to the form of the object you're putting it on. If you have a material that can't stretch, it can become an unforgiving mess as you push it to its limits, creating wrinkles. Secondly, unlike paint, spray adhesive is thick and accumulates on itself. If you don't clean your nozzle and spray it at strange angles, it can glob and clump and it will spray that onto your fabric. And lastly, know when to do certain segments and stages, and don't be afraid to ask for help. A second set of hands would have really helped me here. Ultimately, things turned out okay. Fortunately, you have enough play time with the spray adhesive to pull and reapply the fabric to try to get your best result. I simply left a few of the troublesome areas bare to be fixed later with some small stitched inlays. Everything should go back close to factory, but since they're pressure fit and locked in place with clips, they are going to be a lot tighter and will require a lot more pressure. I'm replacing my armrest with a carbon fiber one. The internal plastics and hinge just need to be swapped over. Some modification to the hinge may be necessary to do this. The old stuff screws out, the new stuff screws in. Simple enough. Now is a good time to test fit the insert for the cup holders and the cubby inside the console. Close the armrest to make sure everything fits and clicks in place properly. Next, my girlfriend and I fixed in place the inlays to cover up the back seams and the space left on the side. And here we have our completed console. As you can see, it definitely looks very different shining in the sun. But I like the dynamic nature of the color of it. We do still need to attach our shift boot. I attached the new shift boot to the shifter ring on the underside using some zip ties. That way I didn't have to cut the fabric and risk it tearing.
replace those four screws from underneath and your shift boot's back in business. Now we can go ahead and go back to the car and put this in. I took a moment to vacuum out everything I wouldn't normally have access to and to also check for anything that didn't look quite right. With the console back in place, tighten the four screws at the base of it, once again making sure the tab on the left front one is sitting how it was originally. Plug the cigarette lighter back in, and then click the wiring back in place. We can now click the insert back in place for the final time. Now all that's left is our new shift knob, but we'll return to that a little bit later. First, the stock e-brake handle is gonna go. I measured and cut away enough of the stock rubber e-brake handle to make room for the new metal one, using a flat one-bladed hand cutting tool. Rotating it went through the rubber pretty easily. We created a pretty clean round cut. With enough shimmying and turning, the piece you cut will slide off. Now test fit the new handle. Now we're ready for the e-brake boot. We're gonna install this the same way we did the shift boot one. Inside out and with a zip tie. This particular e-brake handle uses three Allen key set screws to fix it in place against the stock shaft. I added some electrical tape to the base of it to act as a buffer to avoid any vibrations and to fill up any of the gapping that may cause play. Once you've tightened down the set screws and everything sits as it should, give it a test to make sure everything's working properly. Next stop are the door sills. We're gonna swap out these plastic ones for carbon fiber. These are attached by one screw in the footwell and five clips at the base of the door jamb. These trim prying tools make for quick work of this without damaging anything. I cleaned underneath now that it's accessible. and added some strong 3M mounting tape. Replace the screw in the footwell and you're done. Just repeat the same process on the other side. Now we're getting somewhere. But now we need to tackle the next big stage, the headliner and other roof parts. We'll start off needing a Torx bit, in this case a T25, to remove the sun visors. Fold the visor out of your way and remove the two bolts while supporting the weight of the sun visor. The wiring will pull down, revealing a connector for the light of the vanity. These connectors were surprisingly difficult to unplug. I ended up using a small flathead to pry up on the release tab. For the visor clips, it's just one Phillips head screw. It'll pull out on a pin. 
My LED panel just wasn't cutting it for lighting, so we'll continue in the morning. Same procedures go for the passenger side visor. Hopefully things go a bit smoother the second time. Remove the trim surrounding the sunroof switch with the pry tool. This will hinge down from the back. Now for the A-pillars. With the pry tool and a little bit of brute force, these should come out pretty easily. There's two metal cylinders in the A-pillar, filling the small gap between the trim and the car body. These might come off when you take off the A-pillar. They click right back in. Some clips will stay on the pillar itself, and others will stay in the car body. Or if you're less lucky, they'll break altogether. The front hole is just a locking pin holding it in place. Pull straight back and you shouldn't damage this one. Same goes for the driver's side. As for the sunroof itself, you just need to remove the weather stripping around the opening. It just pulls right out. With all this stuff out, the front section will start to come loose. As for the back, we still have three push clips that need to be taken out. Most pry tool kits should have a tool specifically for this. They come out very easily. As for the trims and plastic, I used SEMS Color Coat, a flexible coating, to spray these in their Lindau Black. These SEM coatings can be used on vinyl, cloth, and many other different kinds of surfaces. If you prep and spray them the right way, that is. Now the headliner is just being held on by a few small things. If you come to the driver's side C-pillar, this hook needs to be removed. Just one Phillips head screw. Now you don't need to remove the C-pillars to get the headliner out. You simply need to release the clips at the tops of them. This leaves you just enough space to send the headliner forward and let it come out. This part was an interesting challenge, but I was able to do it by myself. Fold your rear view mirror all the way down. Then send the headliner forward, forcing it underneath it. Then you can pull each side out from underneath each C-pillar. That'll take a little bit of force. With the headliner dropped out from the C-pillars, you can now pull it out of the car. I sent mine back out the rear hatch. As for the fabric wrapping, all the aforementioned struggles apply once again, if not even more. Plan your moves, do it in stages, and definitely get yourself an extra set of hands. This is my first time doing upholstery of any kind like this, so perfection was far from my expectation. But believe me, I wish you the best. Cut your access holes where you need them, and trim and glue your ends. You should end up with something like this. Leave it alone for a little while to let the glue set. In the meantime, we could tackle the sunshade that's in the sunroof. Unfortunately, these can't be removed without damaging them, without dropping the entire sunroof. I was confident enough to do this, however it wasn't worth the effort just to change the color, especially while having a perfectly functioning sunroof as it sits. Instead, a lot of masking and some color coat 
did the trick perfectly fine. And finally, it's time for the reassembly. It's essentially everything in reverse order. Just far more careful and meticulous. You obviously don't want to damage your work. Tuck the edges back into the weather stripping, lead your wires to the openings, and fix everything back into place. Finally, mi pies de restance. No, I don't speak French. My custom shift knob from Zenon in a car guy's garage in Canada. Finally, after what felt like a year long process, due to 2020 being quite the eventful year, it's here. Darkened wood with gold leaf and purple resin. A bit of resemblance to amethyst with a cosmic twist. Custom threaded to my M10125 thread pitch for my short throw shifter. So thank you again, Zenon. It's everything I hoped it would be. And finally, with no further ado, we could screw this bad boy in and have a look at the next stage of our interior all wrapped up. Well, to any others tearing apart their interior to make it their own, I hope you found this helpful, and I wish you the best of luck with yours. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.